Hi everyone, Happy New Year. May this year bring exciting chase and happiness to you. And uh, welcome to the next part of Aaron Nemzovich, my system. Shout out to Alipals for gifting three tier one subscriptions on my stream last week. Awesome support by Alipals. He gifted a subscription to Blowfish Fugu, another viewer and good chess player on my stream. And then he also gifted a subscription to Gina Rook, who was also the top chairer once again with 151 bits last week. And then Ali Pals gifted a subscription to Metal Eagle, who was the second top chairer with 105 bits. Uh, Metal Eagle is a national master and a good friend. He has a really nice stream of his own uh, where he likes to help people improve in chess. And um, I will post a link to his stream in the video description as well. So, thank you for the support guys, much appreciated. And uh, the customary quote, Every chess master was once a beginner. Some food for thought by Irving Shirnev, who was a chess player of national master strength and a Russian-American chess author. And uh, now a review of uh, the last part where we went through some examples on how to deal with a free enemy pawn center and also went through an example of how to decline a gambit. So now, moving further into the book, Nemzovich gives an illustration of how to decline the Evans gambit, where we have uh, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, and b4, the Evans gambit. And here Nemzovich writes that we decline the gambit with bishop to b6 in order to avoid being driven all across the place which would happen if we played bishop takes on b4. With c3 to follow by white uh, gaining a tempo on the threatened bishop since uh, black will have to use a move to save it. And uh, Nemzovich further writes Black by playing bishop to b6 has by no means lost a tempo since uh, the move b4 by white does not bear a logical connection with the center. And uh, here if uh, white continues with b5 with hopes of having a demobilizing effect on black then comes knight d4 and uh, now if knight takes on e5 then out comes the black queen with queen g5 and a strong attack against white. And uh, now Nemzovich gives an illustration of uh, how to decline the king's gambit. Where we have uh, e4, e5 and f4, the king's gambit. And now black can decline the gambit with either bishop to b4 or the simple d6 which uh, Nemzovich writes a move which is better than its reputation. And uh, now, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop e6, bishop takes bishop, f takes on e6, f takes on e5, d takes on e5. And of this position, Nemzovich writes, black has with good development two open files for his rooks. Uh, the f and uh, d file and in spite of his double pawns stands rather the better <clears throat> and uh, if uh, after bishop to e6 white goes for uh, bishop to b5 then perhaps bishop to d7 of which Nemzovich writes since white has wandered about with his bishop black may do the like and uh, then Nemzovich gives an illustration through a variation in uh, the same line. Where uh, we have uh, e4, e5, f4 and now d6 by black. Knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, knight f6 and after bishop to e2, e takes on f4 is possible by black according to Nemzovich. And if white goes with d3 here, then d5 by black. And of this, Nemzovich writes, is the timely surrender of the center and a speedy or immediate recapture of the same. 
and uh, here Nemsevich gives an illustration of accepting the king's gambit where we have uh, e4 e5 f4 and e takes on f4 accepting white's gambit pawn now knight f3 and knight f6 by black and of this move knight f6 Nemsevich writes we play this move not however with the idea of keeping the gambit pawn but rather to subject the strength of uh, white center to a severe test and uh, if white uh, continues with e5 here then knight h5 by black and uh, if instead uh, knight to c3 here by white then black can counter thrust by d5 and uh, then further into the book names of which discusses regarding a center pawn which should always be taken if this can be done without too great danger he explains this concept with the following illustration where we have uh, e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 the italian game knight f6 which is uh, the two knights defense of the Italian game and uh, here if white goes with c3 then knight takes on e4 of uh, which Nemzovic writes for the ideal win of a pawn which the conquest of the center implies is not dear at the cost of a tempo it is of less importance to keep the pawn it is the ideal, not the material gain, with which we are here concerned. Put otherwise, the win of a pawn anywhere on the side of the board brings no happiness in its train. But if you gain a pawn in the middle, then you really have something to talk about. For thus you will get the possibility of expansion at the very spot round which in the opening stages the fight usually sways namely the center in other words you will get elbow room and uh, here Nemsevich gives another example through a diagram where uh, after uh, knight c6 by black white goes for knight to c3 the three knights opening and uh, here if black plays uh, bishop c5 then comes knight takes on e5 knight takes on e5 and d4 which will win back the sacrifice piece for white after uh, taking out black center pawn on e5 and uh, with this Nemzovich closes the first chapter and refers the reader to games one and two of the illustrative game section at the end of the book so let's go through both these games briefly since um, I will not be going through a detailed analysis with computer assistance as in my videos of the Grandmaster game series and uh, will rely mostly on Nemzovich annotations in the games for clarity. And uh, the first illustrative game is uh, between Nemzovich and Simeon Alepin who was a chess master openings analyst and puzzles composer born in St. Petersburg. He was one of the strongest chess players in the Russian Empire during the late 19th century. And uh, this game was played in Riga in 1913 as quoted in my system. And uh, Nemzovich highlights this game as an illustration regarding the consequences of pawn snatching in the opening. So let's get into the moves of the game. Nemzovich with the white pieces and Alepin with the black. And Nemzovich began the game with e4. Alepin responded e6, the French defense. d4, d5, knight c3, knight f6, the classical variation of the French defense. And here Nemzovich played e takes on d5, which is the delayed exchange variation line. Knight takes on d5 by black, of which Nemzovich comments as the surrender of the center, since white now has a free pawn in the center with d4. Knight c3 and c5, of which Nemzovich writes to kill the pawn on d4. Restraint might have been effected by bishop e7, castling, b6, 
6 and bishop to d7 by black <clears throat> but uh, c5 was uh, played by black in the game to kill white's d pawn so now knight takes on d5 queen takes on d5 and bishop e3 a move regarding which he comments it was to be able to make this move which combines development and attack uh, the threat is d takes on c5 winning a pawn which is why white exchanged knights as such uh, c takes on d4 by black of which nemzovich comments disappearance of tempo spells loss of time and uh, you can see that uh, uh, white is ahead in development here with the two of its minor pieces developed in comparison to black which has just the queen in the center so now knight takes on d4 a6 bishop e2 and queen takes on g2 regarding which names of which writes stealing a pawn the consequences are grievous bishop f3 attacking the black queen and defending the threatened rook as such uh, queen g6 queen d2 and e5 on which nemzovich writes the crisis black means to be rid of the unpleasant knight so that he may in some measure catch up in development all right uh, you can pause the video here if you would uh, like to find the best move for white <clears throat> Castling Long by Nemzovich, offering black a knight sacrifice, which was accepted with e takes on d4. So now bishop takes on d4, of which Nemzovich writes, white's advantage in development is now too great. Now knight c6 by black, and uh, you can pause the video here again to find the best move for white. Bishop f6 of which Nemzovich writes, travels by express. Any other bishop move could have been answered by a development move. For example, if you go with a bishop e3, then black can play bishop e7, developing the dark bishop and preparing castling. Whereas now, according to Nemzovich, there is no time for this. Black must take. Queen takes on f6 and now rook e1 check. And Nemzovich writes, play in the king and queen's file at the same time the danger of a breakthrough is great bishop d7 blocking the check and uh, if instead you block the check with the light bishop then uh, queen d7 is checkmate so instead uh, bishop e7 but now comes bishop takes on c6 check and king f8 and uh, if you go with the b takes on c6 here then queen d8 is checkmate so king f8 and uh, all right uh, you can pause the video yet again here if you would like to spot the mating sequence for white queen d8 check followed by Bishop takes on d8 and rook e8 is checkmate as was played in the game. So there you go, a famous and beautiful miniature by Aaron Nemsevich. And uh, the second illustrative game is uh, between Richard Teichmann and Nemsevich. Now Teichmann was a German master who was a strong player with wins against most leading players of the early 20th century with the exception of Emmanuel Lasker and Capablanca. And uh, this game took place in the Karlsbad tournament of 1911 in Karlsbad or Karlovy Vary, located in present-day Czech Republic. And uh, Nemzovich writes regarding the game, White obtains a free mobile center pawn in his king's pawn or e-pawn. Black keeps it in restraint by means of the resources which he has in the e-file succeeds quite properly in killing the criminal but then comes to grief the end game is instructive as an example of the problems of restraint in the wider sense so let's get into the moves of the game Teichmann with the white pieces and Nemsevich with the black 
e4, e5, knight f3, and d6 by Nemzovich, the Philidor defense. d4, knight f6, knight c3, and knight d7 by Nemzovich, of uh, which he writes, the Hanaham variation makes development more difficult but holds the center. To call the move ugly would be a question of aberration or irregularity of taste. And play then continued with developing moves, bishop c4, bishop e7, and castling, castling, queen e2, and c6 by Nemsovich, of which he writes, by which at least black establishes a sort of pawn majority in the center, though it is true white for the time calls the tune. Now a4 by white, on which he comments, the close character of the game allows of pawn moves in the opening. Queen c7, bishop b3 and a6, and Nemzovich comments in order to be able eventually to advance the c-pawn. And uh, then followed h3 and e takes on d4, of which Nemzovich writes, giving up the center must not be regarded as illogical here. Was happiness no happiness because it endured for but a short time? One cannot always be happy. So now knight takes on d4 and rook e8. And Nemsevich writes, restraint strategy directed against the e-pawn. Bishop f4, bishop f8, f3 and knight c5 by Nemsevich. And he writes, the attentive student will have expected black to take possession of an advanced port post at e5, but he wishes first to exchange a commendable stratagem or maneuver in cramped positions. So now bishop a2 and knight e6 by black ready to exchange the knight and uh, Teichman captured with bishop takes on e6, bishop takes on e6, queen d2, rook d8. Rook e1, bishop c8, rook d1, and knight d7. And Nemzovich writes, And now having harmoniously completed his development, though for harmony there was in truth not much room to spare in his cramped quarters, black occupies the advanced post with knight f5 and knight e5, of which Nemzovich writes, The knight on e5 commands the field, large radius of attack. Any attempt to drive him away by f4 would weaken the e-pawn. So now knight d4 and f6 on which Nemzovich comments, observe the gradual paralyzing of the e-pawn. King h1, queen f7, queen f2, queen g6, b3 and knight f7. And Nemzovich writes, and now f4 is prepared for. The student will perhaps ask what has the knight at e5 accomplished. Quite enough, since white could undertake nothing. And play continued here with king h2, rook e7, knight e2 and f5, which Nemzovich describes as killing the paralyzed e-pawn. Knight g3 and f takes on e4, which Nimzovich remarks as over hasty. Rook d to e1 should have been played. And he gives a possible continuation here where the e takes on f5, bishop takes on f5, knight takes on f5, queen takes on f5, bishop g3, rook takes on e1, rook takes on e1, rook takes on e1, queen takes on e1, and queen takes on c2 where black has won a pawn and has a much better position. But uh, f takes on e4 was played immediately by Nemsovich in the game. So now knight, e knight takes on e4 by Tishman, of uh, which Nemsovich acknowledges this as being correct, since uh, after f takes on e4, the isolated e-pawn would have been a bad weakness for white. So knight takes on e4, d5 by black, knight c5, rook e8, knight d3, and rook takes on e1. And Nemzovich writes, black has now got an equal game. 
knight d6 instead over here would surrender the e5 square according to Nemzovich. So rook takes on e1, rook takes on e1, rook takes on e1, queen takes on e1, queen e6, queen takes on e6, bishop takes on e6, and bishop e3 by white of which Nemzovic writes. This good move puts black's pawn majority on the queen side under restraint. Black should now have contended himself with a draw. He wished to get more and lost the game in what follows. So then came bishop d6, f4, king f8, king g1, g6, king f2, h5, knight c5, bishop c8, a5, knight h6, b4, king f7, c3, and knight g8, where Nemzovich remarks that knight f5 instead would have drawn. But knight g8, and uh, now king f3, Knight f6, bishop d4, bishop takes on c5, bishop takes on c5, bishop e6, bishop d4, knight e4, and knight e2, of which Nemzovich comments, not knight takes on e4, d takes on e4 check, king takes on e4, because of bishop d5 check, followed by bishop takes on g2. So instead, uh, knight e2 and bishop f5, and Nemzovich writes, it is no use. Black is in effect a pawn down. His majority is paralyzed. Whites is mobile. So now g4 by Teichman using his mobile pawn majority. H takes on g4 check, H takes on g4, and knight d2 check. When Nemzovich comments, it would have been much better to keep the bishop at home with bishop d7. <clears throat> but uh, knight d2 check by black. So now king g3, bishop c2, knight g1, king e6, king h4, bishop d1, knight h3, knight e4, and f5 check. Nemzovich remarks. White ingeniously turns his majority to account. G takes on f5. Uh, if instead uh, you go for king f7 over here, then comes f takes on g6 check, king takes on g6, and knight f4 check, which according to Nemzovich would have been unpleasant for black. So instead, uh, g takes on f5, but now knight f4 check. Uh, drives the black king back with king f7 and now g5 bishop g4 g6 check king e7 g7 king f7 and knight g6 where Nemzovich resigned and uh, the threat being knight e7 where black has no good defense against it and uh, uh, you know the g pawn will eventually queen Alright, uh, we conclude this part of uh, my system here and uh, you will be glad to know that uh, we are done with almost 50 pages of the book, the total being 394 in the copy with me. And uh, in the next part, we shall continue and begin chapter 2 uh, of the book, which is named on open files. Alright, till next time, take care.